Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. In this lesson, we're going to continue to learn more about story problems. Uh, in this lesson, it's a more specific type that involves distance, rate, and time. So the distance rate time formula is actually an example of a literal equation. And we're going to learn more about that in the next few lessons. So let's have a look at the formula. Here it is. Distance equals to rate or speed. Rate and speed in this situation mean the same. Rate or speed multiplied with time. In short, it is D equals RT. R stands for rate or speed. T stands for time. A quick example, if you're trying to drive somewhere and let's say your speed in your car is showing as uh, 60 miles per hour and you're driving for one hour, that means you potentially have would have driven uh, 60 miles. So that's uh, how it works. Let's look at some simple examples. Question A. What if you are given the distance and time? For example, the distance to a nearby city is 150 miles, and it takes a motorcyclist three hours to get there, and is asking what is the rate. So the formula is, again, D equals R times T. So 150 is the distance. That equals to, the, it's asking for the speed or the rate, so it's going to be rate times, the time is 3 hours, and that's exa exactly how we set it up. Then we just divide both sides by a 3, we will get the rate as 50, don't forget a unit, it is 50 miles per hour. There you go. Uh, B, what if you are given the distance and the rate? So 350 miles, a cyclist is riding at a rate of 25 miles per hour. How long uh, would it, is it going to take to get to the city? So similarly, distance, which is 350, that equals to 25 is the speed times the t, which is the time. We're going to divide both sides by a 25. We're going to get the t equals 14 hours. So that's how we can use the formula to simply solve some equations, some uh, equation prob story problems. So let's have a look at more complicated examples. Example one, a train travels at a speed of 50 miles per hour. How far would a train travel in four hours? So the distance is, the rate is given as 50, and it's traveling at four, for four hours. So clearly, that's going to equal 200 miles. Example two, a cruise ship made a trip to Tahiti and back. On a trip there, it traveled 17 kilometer per hour, and on the return trip, it actually went 25.5 kilometer per hour. How long did the trip there take if the return trip took eight hours? Eight hours for the return trip. So one thing you gotta be clear in this situation, well, the trip there and the trip back is gonna be the same distance. So let's say we have the trip there. The trip there. The distance is going to be, the rate is 17 km per hour times the time, and a trip back is going to be 25.5, well let's actually uh, still use this. The distance is 25.5 km per hour times the 8 hours, which is going to be 20, uh, no, 204, don't forget a unit, kilometers. So the distance is actually kilometer, and the trip there and trip back are the same, which means the 17 times h is also going to be 204 kilometer. So you can divide both sides by a 17. That's going to get you h as 12 hours. So we're using the key for this question. The distance is the same. That's example two. Moving on, example three. Maria and John start at the same point and travel in opposite directions. Maria walks at a speed of 3 miles per hour, and John jogs at a speed of 5 miles per hour. How far apart will, there, will they be after 2 hours? So first, let's deal with Maria. Uh, 3 miles per hour. So the distance for Maria is going to be 3 miles times after 2 hours, so times 2. And then the distance for John is going to be 5 miles per hour, then times the 2. So for Maria, the travel distance is going to be 6 miles. And for John, the travel distance is going to be 10 miles. And eventually it's saying 
how far are they going to be apart? Since they're traveling at in opposite directions, the overall distance would actually be the distance for Maria and the distance for John added together, which is going to be 16 miles. That's example three. Example four. Sarah is driving to visit her friend who lives 180 miles away. On her way there, she drives at an average speed of 60 miles per hour. On her way there. That's the important distance. 60 miles per hour. Uh, on her way back, she encounters traffic and drives at an average speed of 45 miles per hour. How much longer does it take Sarah to drive back home compared to driving to her friend's house? So let's set things up separately. The trip there. The distance is 180 miles, and the rate is 60, and then we're multiplying with a T. Uh, let's write it down as trip there. That means we can calculate right both sides by a 60, so the amount of time it takes for her to actually drive there, trip there, is going to be 3 hours. Then let's also calculate the trip back. It is still going to be 180, since that's still the distance she's driving. And this time it's a 45 for the rate, and we're multiplying with the trip back. So the amount of time for the trip back is going to be 4 hours. Because 180 divided by 45 is 4 hours. And the difference between the 3 hours and the 4 hours, 4 minus 1, trip back is actually 1 hour longer. There you go. That's example four. Moving on, example five. Jose left the Capitol building and drove towards Las Vegas at an average speed of five miles per hour. Rob left some time later, driving in the same direction at an average speed of 80 miles per hour. After Rob drove uh, for uh, five hours, he caught up with Jose. How long did Jose drive before Rob started driving? So let's... Uh, Decide what we uh, want to kick as a variable. It's asking how long did Jose drive before Rob started driving. Let's actually draw a little diagram. So let's say it's, this is Jose. He's driving from the Capitol building towards Las Vegas. And the speed is 50 miles per hour. And Rob drove in the same direction, but it's a bit later. So here's Rob. Um, that means Rob actually is driving a bit later. So time has already passed. Then Rob starts driving. And they're actually at the same place after Rob drove for five hours. But Rob is driving at 80 miles per hour for five hours. The thing is they drove actually the same distance because when Rob caught up, they're at the same location and they were both starting from the Capitol building. So the key is same Discuss. So let's actually use that to set up an equation for Rob. The distance is going to be the rate as 80, and the amount of time is 5. So Rob in total drove 400 miles. For Jose, well, we actually don't know how, mu how much time Jose drove. The only thing we know is Jose drove the 5 hours that Rob did, but also Jose started early. So let's see, let's say we can set up the T as Jose drive before Rob. So if that's our T, that means altogether Jose would have driven five, I mean T plus the five hours. Because Jose drove first for a little bit, and then him and Rob together both drove the five hours. So that would be the time for Jose. The distance is going to be 50 times the t plus 5, which in this case would have to equal the 400, because the key is they drove the same amount of distance. And that is our equation, 400 and 400. Okay, so we can actually get 50 t plus 250 equals 400. A simple equation to solve, subtract 250 on both sides, then divide by 50 on both sides. t is going to be 3 hours. That means Jose already drove three hours before Rob started driving. That's example five. So the key for this one, again, we're using the same distance to set up an equation, which is down here.
So if you actually want one step as an equation, it would have been 50 times t plus 5, that equals 280 times 5. The left side would be the distance for Jose, the right side would be the distance for Rob, and they're the same. Moving on, example 6. James left Lisa's house and drove towards the mountain. Jen left 1.6 hours later driving 25.5 kilometers per hour faster in an effort to catch up to James. After Jen drove for 3.2 hours, she finally caught up to James. What was James' average speed? So the key for this question, again, is very similar to the previous one, is the same distance. So we're going to need to use ways to actually set up for their distance. James and Jen. Okay, uh, it's asking for James' average speed. Let's say James' average speed is just uh, you can either use letter J or R or X, whatever letter you want to use. Let's say it's R. Okay. James, um, the speed, I mean, the distance that James traveled would be B equals the R times, let's think about how long did, uh, did James actually drive. Jen left 1.6 hours later, and then Jen also drove the 3.2 hours. So in that case, James would have been driving, been driving for 1.6 hours when Jen left, and then they both actually drove the 3.2 hours. So that means the time would be a 1.6 plus the 3.2. That's for James. For Jen, the rate is 25.5 faster than James. So the rate for Jen would be R plus the 25.5. And Jen, in this case, didn't drive the initial 1.6 hours, so Jen only drove for 3.2 hours, so we're going to multiply it with a 3.2. That's just, we are, uh, we're just setting up the distance for both James and Jen. But the question indicates that they actually drove the same distance, so now we can actually just use that to set up an equation. R times 1.6 plus 3.2 equals R times 25.5, uh, R plus 25.5 times 3.2. So we're going to end up with the R times 4.8. So it's a 4.8 R on the left side. The right side, we're going to need to distribute. So it's going to be a 3.2 R plus. That will give us 81.6. Subtract a 3.2 R over. We're going to get 1.6 R equals 81.6. Then divide both sides by a 1.6. We're going to get R equals 51, don't forget a unit, kilometer per hour. There we go. So it's another same distance question. We can just use the formula to set up for James and set up for Jen, and then eventually set them equal to each other to get a full equation that we can solve for. Okay, let's continue to the very last example. Jamie and Alex are participating in a charity bike ride. Jamie rides at a steady pace of 12 miles per hour, while Alex rides at a steady pace of 15 miles per hour. They both start at the same time, but from different locations. If Jamie has written for three hours, how long will it take for Alex uh, to catch up to Jamie? So there's actually a typo, this sentence. So let's actually change that. It should have been, they start at different time, but same location. Which, in other words, if they're starting at the same location, they would eventually travel the same distance again. Okay, so let's uh, still use the distance to set up. We have Jamie and Alex. The question is asking how long will it take Alex to catch up to Jamie? Um, well, Alex is just traveling a certain amount of time. Let's say Alex is going to travel the time t. So the distance that Alex is going to travel is 15 miles per hour, so that's the rate, multiply with t. As for Jamie, the distance that Jamie has traveled will be 12 miles per hour, but Jamie traveled for 3 hours already. So Jamie has written for 3 hours already before Alex started. So that means Jamie have, would have been traveling for 3 plus t. That's the amount of time. The first 3 hours, and then uh, when Alex starts is the same amount of time. And eventually, they are going to travel the same distance because Alex will be catching up to Jamie. That means at some point, they're going to be at the same location. So they started at the same location. At some point, they're going to 
be at the same location, which in other words, they travel the same distance. So now we can actually use that to set up an equation. 12 times 3 plus t, that is for Jamie's distance, that should be the same as Alex's distance, which is 15 t. We're going to have 36 plus 12 t, that equals 15 t. Subtract 12 t on both sides, 36 equals 3 t, divide both sides by a th uh, 3, t would be 12 hours. So Alex would travel 12 hours before catching up to Jamie. And at that point, Jamie would have traveled for 15 hours. So this is the very last example. Thank you.